Hi everyone, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. In today's video, we're doing a walk and talk where I answer questions from the Modern Vitality Solutions and Support Group. And today we've got a great question which has to do with mold exposure. Now, a lot of people in, well, a lot of people in society, but I was gonna say a lot of people in my community have dealt with mold exposure, mold toxicity, mycotoxins, and you'll find a playlist on my channel which is all about how to recover your health from mold. So if you're kind of just starting out or even if you've been at it a while and you're getting a little stuck or you're plateauing, I would encourage you go check out that playlist where I'm running down, I'm dumping out my brain basically and just running down everything I can for you on mold exposure. So the question basically is about uh, these tinctures that are now available in health food stores. And the idea is that these tinctures have uh, some mold in them, right? some mold spores. And the theory here is that you take the tinctures and that will help your body train and practice dealing with mold, okay? So we had a question from uh, a guest in our group who was asking about that and given that she has a history of mold and she's got um, a lot of inflammatory over inflammation happening, you know, she's trying to find some solutions or some kind of next step forward, right? Which is one of the reasons why our group exists is to have a forum where we can have conversations and discussions about these kinds of things, right? So I'm, again, I'm happy, I'm happy to offer my perspective to anybody in our group, of course. And what I'll say about this is that what we have is a well-intentioned idea that's based on something very sound, right? But the problem is, without understanding the stages, which is why I'm always railing on about this, stage one, immune, stage two, digestive, stage three, neuroadrenal, stage four, blood circulation, Stage five, right? Super secret bonus stage five. That's boosting, right? That's optimization. That's biohacking, okay? And that's where another term that I really enjoy, hormesis, that's where hormesis really lives, is in stage five. So when we look at this idea of taking on some small, minute doses of mold spores, right, to try to give your immune system an opportunity to learn how to fight them, what we're really doing is it's hormesis. Now, hormesis is a great idea. It's a wonderful idea because what hormesis means, how you, how you define hormesis is basically what doesn't kill you makes you stronger because your body is an anti-fragile system, right? Which means that given the right baseline of health, that if we introduce stressors, right? Whether they're immune stressors, digestive stressors, neuroadrenal stressors, blood circulation stressors, right? Any kind of stressor or trigger, if you introduce it in a small enough dose small enough amount, then your body will learn and get stronger. Okay. And that's how it's supposed to work. And that's how life works. That's how nature works. And we, we have that capacity. Now, what I will say is that that's a well-intentioned strategy. However, the problem, the downside with that is it doesn't take into account these stages of healing, right? So what you're basically doing is giving someone the option to do a stage five type of hormesis, right? Which is a little bit advanced when they're in stage one, when they already have overactive inflammatory processes going on, when their body's already inflamed, right? So what's gonna happen in that case is you're skipping stages in a very significant way. And I've said this before, I'll keep saying it. Good advice, right, doing the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing, <laughs> okay? It's just that the trouble is most people don't have a model and understand healing and the actual process and where there's checkpoints and mild markers basically and knowing when you finish one stage and you're ready to move on to the next if you don't understand that then you will skip stages and you'll blunder through and unfortunately sometimes it can have very serious consequences so for example right with mold if you have a problem with mold it's probably already in your body and it's more like you need to get rid of what's in there than take on more right your immune system already has a uh, ample amount of mold in it to train with right to practice with your immune system already had an opportunity to do that and by the time you're sick with mold and all inflamed and dealing with the man not only the the environmental and some of the the physical impacts of having that right like you've got to now change a lot of your house sometimes you have to get rid of your things you've got to move or whatever you're also it's, it's common okay it doesn't happen to everybody but it's very common to start to get a little bit of a mental complex about mold Right, and now you become a little bit paranoid, you don't go certain places, right, because you're trying to avoid a mold hit, right, to get a blast of mold in your system. So you get all the physical issues going on, and then there's also this mental stuff, and it's a lot of it's built around avoidance, which is usually a very sound first step, and for some people it's a, an extreme step that they have to take for a long, long time in their life, sometimes permanently, is to try to be away from that as much as possible. So when you introduce more on purpose, be careful. Right, because in a lot of ways you're kind of, if you go looking for trouble, you might get some trouble, 
And I can tell you even from my own experience personally, which this channel and my project, Modern Vitality, right, it's not really about my personal health process. I, I don't really make this a platform where I can just, you know, talk about how badly I've suffered or what. It's not about, it's about me helping you. That's really the whole thing. However, sometimes I do share these things and I've shared some of my personal experiences with mold, with mycotoxins, with, with uh, basically temporary brain damage from this stuff. It is serious. We don't mess around with it. And I will tell you that every time I've had a re-exposure to it, I get symptomatic, right, in one form or another. And it might not be as severe as the early times when I was really like bombarded with it, but I still can tell. And a lot of people that have been exposed to mold have the same thing where their spidey senses start tingling and they're like, oh, there's mold, you know, something's here. And, you know, like for me, I was in a, I was getting my um, car fixed at a, a garage and I was in the waiting room and I was like, oh, something's off in here. And I looked up and there's the ceiling tile and there's all this black mess growing on it. And I went, I'm, I'm out of here. Like you can call me when the car's ready. Like I'll go wait in the street, you know, and I could tell and I didn't like it and it didn't make me stronger, right? That, that hormetic effect of a little bit of poison to make you stronger. It doesn't quite work as far as I can tell with mold and it's, it's well-intentioned what they're doing, why they're making it uh, available. But the kinds of people, unfortunately, I, at first glance here, and there may be things that I need to learn more about these specific products, right? But the kinds of people who would be drawn to preemptively taking mold aren't the kinds of people who would do well with it, right? Like somebody who's already got mold on their radar is because the mold's already messed them up. It's too late for that. It's too late to practice. It's too late for your immune system to practice. So there's my stance on that. And I'll give you a little bit of um, an example, like a metaphor in terms of physical medicine, right? Because I talk a lot about having a systematic stage-by-stage -stage approach that like makes sense and feels intuitively right based on how your body works and going stage one, immune, stage two, digestive, stage three, neuroadrenal, stage four, blood circulation, stage five, boosting. That's when you can do hormesis type stuff, right? If at all, if needed, it tends to be optional for most people of how much intensity they need to do there, right? But we can look at that also in terms of physical medicine. And this is where it starts to make more sense because a lot of people have an understanding of mechanical medicine and injuries that's, you know, it's more straightforward. It's easier to understand. This, these complex chronic health conditions are um, very tangled, right? And very complex, right? That's why they're complex chronic health conditions. So it's harder to just take a quick glance at it unless you're highly trained and know what you're doing and what you're looking for. But I'll give you an example. One is your ankle, okay? So imagine that you've got a normal, healthy ankle. And you want to keep it in its proper range of motion because you're going to go play, I don't know, soccer or uh, volleyball or whatever you're going to do with, or football, right? And I said soccer. So I know I've got a lot of um, Europeans and people not from America. So you guys call it football, right? Which is fine. So you're going to go play a sport like that. Well, you want to keep your ankle strong. So you keep it in its normal range of motion. However, we learn that there are some advanced exercises, some warm ups where you actually walk on your foot in weird ways, right? I'll show you what that looks like. Let me get you my foot here, hang on. So you take your foot, right? And normally it's like flat on the ground and you can walk around with it like this. You can do these exercises, right? Like this, where you walk in all these weird ways. You might do this, right? Maybe you walk on your tiptoes, walk on your heels. And you do all this weird stuff that has nothing to do with like a stable ankle. But what that does, because your ankle is healthy and strong, is it challenges it. It puts it in these weird ranges of motion and you're putting some, they're called load-bearing stretches, right? You're putting some weight on a stretched tendon, a stretched ligament, and you're doing it gently. You're doing it carefully and in small doses and you get hormesis, which means your ankle gets stronger. And what's really cool there is if you do those, there's less chance of injury if you accidentally take a misstep, right? So what we're doing is we're putting our ankles in weird positions so that later if we're playing sports, and something happens and we wind up in a weird position, right? That the ankle's used to that. It's gonna be stronger, less chance of injury, right? Caveat, that's what you do with a healthy ankle, okay? If you just broke your ankle, do not do that. <laughs> of course, right? Do not do that. Why would you do that? You're gonna make the injury worse. You can't add a stressor when the system's already at a low point. It's not gonna have the same type of hormetic boost. It's only gonna further, you're only kicking yourself while you're down. So heal the ankle, right? Let the bones repair, let the tissue repair, right? Get the swelling down, get the scar tissue down, and then go nuts, right? Once it's healed and back to normal, you can do all those weird warm ups and you'll be just fine, right? If you choose. Now with our body, 
right? You're basically walking around already inflamed, already overreacting with uh, the immune system going crazy, trying to figure out what to do with these things that are designed, by the way, to break you down and kill you and turn you into soil. That's what mycotoxins do. They're, they're, <laughs> there's nothing like evil about them, but they're very straightforward. I mean, that's what they're trying to do. That's their job. Are you soil, right? That's what they're asking you every day. And your immune system's trying to stand up for you and go, well, not yet, you know, I fight you. <laughs> it's the best they can, right? But the, the mycotoxins are, they're built for like one thing and they're very good at it. So they're trying to break you down. Now, if you're already inundated with that and your immune system doesn't know what to do, don't add more stressors, <laughs> right? I know this sounds obvious, but that, that's the way we're looking at it. And the reason why is because of a stage approach. If you're still all inflamed and your immune system's going crazy and you're reacting to things and you're having symptoms, right? Brain fog, fatigue, low energy, exhaustion, all that stuff. Weird pains, neurological symptoms, trouble sleeping, low libido, digestive issues, etc. Right? If you're having all that, then that's not the time to play around with hormesis, usually, right? That's the time to actually get the stressors out. You need to you need to get out of the pit first before you start doing other advanced things. So unfortunately, Oh, where I stand right now, you know, I'm trying to be open-minded here, but that sounds like a basically a horrible idea because the kinds of people who are attracted to that are the ones who would, would get hurt by it more. And maybe somebody who doesn't have any mold issues ever, if they were somehow aware of this, they might take that and have a tiny bit and kind of inoculate themselves and then prevent future mold issues. I don't know. I'd like to see some studies on that, some research. But at this point, just logically, right? Logic, common sense, right? Thinking things through in terms of a framework. And if you've been around my work at all, you understand these four stages plus bonus five. There are a lot of reasons why you do things in, in the order your body wants. That's the blueprint for, for healing, right? For actually taking the complexity of healing your body and organizing it in a way where you can follow it step by step and you know what to do. And that way you're not doing the right thing at the wrong time, making mistakes. So yeah, if I was, you know, if I was offered to take a little tiny mold hit to get stronger, I've already taken big ones. Uh, I've already had a chance to practice <laughs> with that, right? It, no thanks. I'm not, I'm not interested at this point. So if you like these kinds of conversations, if you have questions on your mind, if you're working on healing and overcoming complex chronic health condition, we don't just do mold, right? We've got fibro, Lyme, chronic fatigue syndrome, long haulers, adrenal fatigue, candida, Epstein-Barr virus. There's a ton of these things, you know, anything autoimmune. You might want to apply for our group. It's free to join as a guest and we're having conversations. Everybody in there is very positive and we're talking about this stuff every single day. It's an international group, lovely place to be. Uh, it's by application, right? So that I can keep it lovely because believe it or not, there are some miserable people out there who just want to, I don't know, spray misery all over the place for some reason. So you can bet I keep them out. And also, um, you know, I try to make sure that everybody coming into the group actually has health issues that we can help right? Because we don't want to get too diluted and off topic. So we're very focused on complex chronic health conditions. If you'd like, you can find the link for your application and I'm happy to take a look. If your application looks great, like you're going to be a stellar fit for our group, I will get back to you as soon as I can to um, welcome you into the group. But just know I keep the group cozy and small and there may be a significant wait. Could be a couple weeks, could be a couple months, but everybody gets the same fair opportunity to join. It's just first come, first serve. So it depends how many people are in front of you. All right, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing your application if you're interested in joining your group. And of course, as always, there's plenty more on this channel and you can subscribe and uh, like the videos and do all those kinds of things that train the algorithm to show you more stuff that's gonna help you get your life back because that's probably the most important thing you're dealing with right now. All right, let's get you feeling better. Cheers.